Good morning, Word of Life Church. Today, I'm also requested by Pastor Dave to give you a devotional, and I choose Genesis. So it's in Genesis chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? As I watched the moon last night, because it's the start of September, so we Filipinos always guard if it's September, October, November, December, and I'm also excited for Christmas. And since I was a child, I always observe that during Christmas time, there are billions of stars there in the sky. So last night, since it was September 1, I watched the moon, and it was shining so brightly. And later on, it was covered by a uh, cloud. And tonight, at 9 o'clock, or up to 9.30, I also keep on watching the moon, but I did not see any stars because there was, again, the cloud. And then, finally, the dark cloud covers the moon. But there was still light in the periphery of the clouds that covers the moon. And this gives me hope. That what we are experiencing now is just temporary. There is darkness. There is blackness. There is some sort of distress or depression or sense of uncertainty. But we are fully assured by God's word that behind the dark clouds is that the moon is shining brightly with all of its splendor, with all of its majesty. The psalm is started with this verse, in uh, verse 1, chapter 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And again, it is concluded in verse 9. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word majestic means having or showing impressive beauty or dignity with solemn grandeur. David in this psalm ascribed or described the name of God as majestic, even making it more valuable or with gravity like how majestic is your name. So there is the Bible meaning of sovereign power, authority, dignity, greatness, or splendor. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5, he described in his prayer, O Lord, the great and awesome God. The same with the prayer of Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 verse 4. It's great and awesome God. And it's also the compound uh, adjectives or attributes of the name of God as they describe also appears in 2 Samuel 7 23 in Deuteronomy 10, Deuteronomy 7, even in Deuteronomy 17 and other books of the Bible. That majesty of God, His sovereign power, His authority, His control over all the affairs of the universe, including the winds, the weather, including this virus pandemic that we are in. You know, as I observed the sky when I was young, I always wonder, what are the distances of the stars? And in our lesson in BSF uh, last, uh, last week, in the study notes, it tells about the, the numerous stars in the sky, that the Milky Way galaxies that, galaxy that we are in contains 100 billion to 400 billion stars and an, estimate, an estimated 500 billion more galaxies lie outside our universe or out, outside our galaxy. Yet, the Lord says His children are more precious to Him than all these planets, all of these stars. That's why David is so right is so correct when he said, when I consider 
the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Word of life, people. The whole universe displays God's glory. God's works display His glory. God's word reveals God's glory. And God's people and their purpose declares God's glory. How are we at Word of Life Church? How can we glorify God? You know, in the daily bread, which I was reading when I was still a new Christian, there are all these quotes at the um, lower portion of the page. And one quote that I like is that every sunrise is a message from God and every sunset is signature. God has a love letter for us each day. And our responsibility is to look for His message from the passages of our Bible, from the pages of our Bible. Or if you have a Bible app in your gadget, you can just swipe it. You know, how many verses are there in the entire Bible? In the Old Testament, there are 23,145 verses. In the New Testament, there are 7,957 verses. A total of 31,102 verses. Tonight or today, we are just discussing two verses. Psalm 8, verse 3, and verse 4. And if you are... We are going to speak of chapters. How many chapters in the Old Testament? 929. In the New Testament, there are 260 chapters. A total of 1,189 chapters. When I was a new Christian, I used to memorize the Word of God. I was so enthralled with the Thou, Thee, Thy. So that's why I memorized the King James Version. I, mem I used to memorize Psalm chapter 1, King James Version. Psalm chapter 8, Psalm chapter 23, twain, Psalm chapter 24, Psalm chapter 40, cha Psalm 150. And my favorite was the shortest uh, chapter in all the Bible, Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise Him, all ye people. Verse 2, for His merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. I would like to challenge for us, Word of Life Church. We bear the name Word of Life. In this quarantine season, can we memorize new verse each day or even one chapter per month? When I was about to celebrate my 40th birthday, that was on 2013, September 13, 2013. On the onset of my birthday, one month, I focused on memorizing Romans chapter 8. And there were 1 to 39 verses that I was able to memorize for that particular month. And during my birthday, my youngest daughter came and said, Congratulations, Papa. You have memorized some, uh, Romans chapter 8 on your 40th birthday. And my challenge now, because we are still engaged in this general community quarantine or in Cebu province that enhance uh, community quarantine, I desire to memorize an additional chapter, Psalm 118, that will lead to Psalm 119. That's a challenge because that's the longest chapter in the entire Bible. Word of Life Church. How much do we know about God? God reveals Himself through His Word. Let us glorify God in this moment, in this pandemic, by concentrating, focusing, pondering, meditating, thinking about His Word, because God's Word reveals His glory. God's world, God's works, declares His glory. And we as God's chosen people, word of life people, we have a purpose. We are destined to glorify God forever. We are made for God. That is who we are. That is our identity. 
And our God is glorious, majestic, full of splendor. And we are called to be glorified with Him. Someday Christ will return and give us glorified bodies. We will become kings and queens and Jesus Christ himself will be the king of kings or the king of queens. That is our destiny. And in this moment of pandemic, we are fully assured that coronavirus is not the terminal end of creation. This is just a temporary passing thing. God has ordained that his glory will be revealed, will be declared, and we will be living with Him with glorified bodies. That is our purpose. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, how we praise You and thank You for Your creation, O Lord, of the galaxies, the planets, the stars, the moon, and everything that is on the earth, the birds that fly, the fish, the teams, the oceans, the creeping animals on the land, they display your glory. And your words from Genesis 1 to Revelations chapter 22, they reveal your glory. Lord, we as Word of Life believers, give us that desire, give us that discipline, give us that delight to glorify you, Lord, day by day. That we will seek you in your word. That we will start to memorize your word, O Lord. As we are experiencing quarantine, help us to ponder. Help us to internalize your words, O God. We want to know you more and the power of your resurrection. Heavenly Father, we just glorify you. For you are worthy of glory and honor and praise. All power, dominion, authority belong to you forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, Word of Life.